Good afternoon. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, first of all, uh, if you don't know me, I'm Rob Ucrop. I've been part of the Richmond Kickers Youth Club Board for many, many years. Um, I've recently stepped down. Um, today we want to share some exciting news about the Richmond Kickers. Uh, we'll, we'll take some time afterwards for some um, offline questions with the media. But uh, we're really excited. First of all, I need to say thank you to Hotel for hosting us down here today. Um, it's great to be downtown in the city. And uh, we're excited uh, about the future plans. So just to get started, um, thanks so much. We have supporters, sponsors, teammates, and most importantly, the Red Army. Thank you guys for showing up. This is exciting today. Um, it's really exciting in the history of the Richmond Kickers. As we announced that 22 Holdings LLC is finalizing details to take over as the majority owner of the Richmond Kickers Pro Team at the end of the year. For those unaware of Richmond's storied history, as the longest consecutive running soccer franchise in the United States, 22 Holdings is thrilled to take the reins as the club's fourth owner. The club was founded in 1993 by Cookie Ketchum and Bobby Lennon. The Kickers got off to an early success, winning the double in 1995 with the league's premier title and the U.S. Open Cup. Thank you, Bobby and Cookie, for bringing professional soccer to Richmond. In 1997, the club took a new direction with Dick Rip and my dad, Bobby, who's in the back there, taking the ownership lead to provide our community with a hometown professional soccer team for young players to aspire to. Mr. Rip and my dad, made a wonderful coaching hire in 2000, elevate my friend and former teammate, Lee Kalashaw, who is somewhere in here. Put your hand up, Lee. Um, to head the coach, as the strategic decisions were made to introduce the first ever Richmond Kickers Youth Soccer Club to continue to serve the community and build the brand. The club continued to thrive with championship level success both on and off the field. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Mr. Rip, for believing in soccer and keeping it moving forward in our community. In 2009, the Richmond Kickers Youth Soccer Club took over as the newest owner. It was an incredible leap of faith, but one the board felt would build on our mission to provide the opportunity for young people and our community to develop healthy life skills and team skills through the active participation in the beautiful game of soccer. I'm grateful for the wonderful stewardship showed by the Kickers Board of Directors and the incredible youth staff that has nurtured the pro team all the way through 2018. If that staff could stand right now on the board, that'd be great so we could recognize you. (laughs) 
So for those that are curious about the genesis of 22 Holdings, it goes back to 2017. My alma mater, Davidson College, hosted a 25-year reunion for our 1992 Davidson Division I Final Four soccer team. As my former Davidson and Kickers teammate, Alex Deegan, who's also a minority invested, investor in 22 Holdings, shared, the reunion was a wonderful, powerful reminder of team, mission, and the impact of soccer on each player's lives. The journey impacted a community for years to come. This collection of memories served to ignite an idea that this team could again harness the team's collective skill set to build and impact a project, one that could serve to bring us together around a common goal, and with that, 22 Holdings LLC was born. Currently, 22 Holdings is made up myself and five other college teammates, all graduating in 1993 with more, with more likely to come on board in the near future. We have investment bankers, we have a doctor, we have a former college head coach, an energy executive from Seattle, each from a different part of the country, many where soccer is thriving. It is wonderful to see the success of my teammates over the last 25 years, and I'm extremely humbled to be part of 22 Holdings. The other exciting part is that the Richmond Kickers Youth Soccer Club will still maintain a minority stake in the pro team as we move forward. So the really fun part about today is the introduction of the aforementioned co former college head coach, our 1992 Final Four team captain, Matt Spear, who will be our Richmond Kickers team pres president. Matt, come on up. Okay. All right, I'm gonna start with my hat. <laughs> so I thought I'd sit down, Coach Buell and I sat down and uh, talk with you guys about our vision, our dream, our energy, our excitement about this project. Um, it starts with Red Army. I'm so glad, Richard, you're sitting in the front because you represent Red Army. We're about our supporters and our fans and the passion for the club is really built about the supporters. So thank you for being here, Richard. I, uh, I brought a prop, cowbell. This is not a tinkerbell. This is, this is, this is serious stuff, okay? Um, I'll give that to you later. I don't want to do it too loud right now. This is kind of a <coughs> boutique hotel. Some people might be sleeping off last night upstairs, and so we'll give that to you later. But we want to work with Red Army to galvanize their influence on the club and how much they mean to the club. Um, it's, what I'm going to do is talk about some of the principles that I believe in in orga organization, um, whether it's sports-related, or otherwise, and I'm going to point out different people in this, in this crowd and different people that represent the Richmond Kickers. And I wanted to start Red Army because two things that you really believe in and what you bring and two principles of mind that are critical for our success, passion and family. So passion, obviously, nothing great happens without passion, with enthusiasm, with energy, belief, conviction, all that comes down to how much you really feel something. And that's what athletics are so great at doing. Family is deep, right? It's, uh, you can't choose your family. Um, those of you that are like me, uh, that are parents, you know, we love our kids, we don't always like them. It's gonna be the same thing with Red Army and our fans and supporters. Sometimes there's gonna be a game, there's sometimes there's gonna be a loss, sometimes there's gonna be a signing that you don't agree with, and we respect that and we understand that, and you should echo that and believe in what you wanna uh, do for the club. Um, but we're still family, and you, you lean on each other and family in good times and bad times. It's kind of like in the game. There's going to be games. I've been a coach many times, and the expression sometimes in a game, you take on water, and it's going to be down a little bit. But how much you believe in each other and go back to that passion and that family, that's when you come out of it, and that's the, the beauty of sports and success in anything you do. It's a Red Army, passion and family. You represent that. Rob Ucrop doesn't want me to talk a lot about him. I'm still going to do it. Um, what does Rob mean to uh, this organization and principles that I feel that are really important? One, he is so competitive. Literally, when we were in college, his license plate was hate to lose. The guy just wants to win. He wants to compete. He wants to put himself out there. And that's what sports do. That's what business does. Um, and good things don't come easy, all right? You've got to really step out of your comfort zone to do something miraculous and special. And we're going to do that here. Um, there's, there's so many stories about Rob being competitive. Uh, you know, one of them is great. If you ever play golf with a guy, be careful because he has this little trick. He'll say, how about this? Why don't I bet that I can outdrive you when I'm on my knees? 
So he'll go first, and he'll crush it out there, and then you're just so nervous. And that's what he does. He kind of has a little of a winning edge about him. The other thing about Rob that I really like is important principles of how we're going to do things. He's authentic. All right, Rob is original. He is himself. He really leads uh, kind of a way that I think is important. We all do it, which is be yourself because everybody else is taken. Do it your own way. And I think Rob is a, an authentic person. We're going to do that. We're going to have an authentic relationship with every fan, with every employee, with everybody that's around this community. And the last piece of Rob that's really important in our principles is gratitude. An attitude of gratitude that you're always thankful, you're respectful of people around you, and we're all in this together. When I resigned about a week and a half ago from Davidson after being the head coach there for 18 years, the thing that choked me up most was when I talked about the maintenance staff. And I think Rob and his family do a great job of that kind of principle, being gracious and grateful for everybody, because everybody really matters. The next person who epitomizes a couple things that are really important in principles is Dreama Nunnally. And Dreama didn't know this was coming, but Dream has been a long-standing, loyal staff member of the Kickers organization. And there's two pieces that I think she really epitomizes. One, dedication, how long she's been doing it, how hard she's worked for this to get where we are and to where we're going to go. And you have to be dedicated to the cause, and you have to be relentless in your pursuit. And she, she really epitomizes that, epitomizes that for the club, in my opinion, dedication. The other thing that Dreama does really, really well and I know this about her because I've been meeting, and talking with her and reading more about her. She's others-oriented. Every great institution is about helping others. One of the missions of Davidson College, where Rob and I went, is developing lives of leadership and service. And I think that can really apply to what we're going to do here at the Kickers as well. Um, and, and all the staff members that I've been able to talk to, that's what I'm trying to emphasize. I'm here for you, to help you, to help you grow. Um, one of the, the, the greatest things that I think I can help is uh, help people improve and um, help David and his team. Um, for example, just a few days ago, um, I've had many assistant coaches over my years coaching at Davidson, and I was proud that the eighth former assistant was just named an NCAA head coach because I tried to develop them and then send them on their way. We're going to be a different team, a different staff year by year, but how can we grow people? And, and that's so critical that we're all in this together to do that. Next person I want to acknowledge is Scott McGuire. Um, Scott is a guy that, uh, to me, epitomizes two other really important areas of what we're going to do in our principles. One, he's a problem solver. So if you don't know, um, Dream is the director of financial services. She wears many hats. Um, Scott McGuire is our stadium general manager. And he's, he's a one-stop shop. The guy is, uh, you, you put it on him, soup to nuts. Um, he can do anything out there. And he's incredibly uh, intentional. Um, so two words I wrote about him I think are really important. Problem solver, hey, give it to me. I'll take it. Let's, let's, go, let's, go, let's go figure this thing out. And then second, he's intentional. He has a plan. And that's ambition, right? Ambition to me means having great goals and then putting a plan together to get there. And the key point, most people fail on the willingness to do it. And, 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 and Scott is making tremendous uh, influence in this in organization with City Stadium. I reached out to a lot of the staff and connected with a lot of the staff on the pro side and uh, as I said to them individually, and I'll do it collectively here, is my job is to help you out and to thank you for all that you've given um, to help us in this new chapter for the club and for the pro side. Um, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm accountable. I'm a, uh, I'm a big believer that um, servant leadership is, is the, way I, the way I do things. And I'll be out there making phone calls um, with uh, folks in the ticket sales office. You know, I already told um, David and Sean I'd be out there making phone calls. I'll be on the field helping out. I want to be at the ticket office. You know, one of the things that um, I think the UCROP family and, and, and what's really important for us as well is that relationship with the people. And they did a great job at that. I used to come to UCROPs all the time when I visit Rob and the family, and you see that in supermarket, that special uh, connection they had with everybody that came in there. Um, and we want to do the same thing as well. We want to be, when someone comes to City Stadium for a soccer game or many other events that we're going to do there, we want them to feel a positive experience right when they get there. Uh, I tell people all the time, you can only make a first impression one time, so make it a good one. Make it positive, make it fun. And so when they come to games, we want to welcome them. When they leave, say thank you. We'll see you next game. We'll see you next, next, next week. Have a, great, have a great rest of the night. Um, I also want to honor Lee. Lee is, uh, is a guy I've known for a long time. Lee and, actually play, uh, and I played against each other when we were in college. And I think we got one win, and University of Richmond got one win. Um, what he means for this, this, uh, this club and the pedigree as a player, as a coach, 
as the director of soccer. Uh, it's impossible to put into words. He was honored yesterday as one of the most important people for Richmond in 2018, a great honor. Um, I loved reading the article this morning uh, about him. I, I, I brought a copy, um, Discover Richmond. He already had one, of course, but if you haven't read it, it's a really good piece. Um, a lot of special people, people are mentioned in there, along with Lee. Uh, the page before is Eric McKay, who's a Davidson alum as well, uh, founded Hardywood, a brewery. Um, so a lot of great a company that Lee is with. And uh, I'm going to lean on Lee. I'm going to need Lee. And uh, he means a lot to this, this club. Let's talk soccer a little bit. Let's get global, all right? First of all, um, most people in this room know this, but to me, without any ounce of hesitation, I can declare that soccer is the most powerful and most followed in the largest global phenomenon. Nothing is bigger in soccer in this world. So it's really important just to kind of let that sink in. Over two billion people watch the World Cup. It's one out of three humans. Super Bowl, not even close. World Series, well, not a World Series, but not even close. The World Cup, and we're hosting that thing here in not too long a time in the USA. Um, we're gonna build toward that with Richmond Kickers. But it is, it is an incredible phenomenon around the world, the power of soccer and what it means. You know, national teams, clubs, youth soccer, grassroots, um, boys, girls, um, anybody can play soccer, and it's, it's so followed. And we want to kind of gather that, that momentum and really channel it the best we can here in Richmond. Um, you know, locally, Richmond has a strong, strong tradition in soccer. Um, I know the kickers have 8,000 players. Um, Jay Howell, where are you, Jay? Um, Jay, thanks for being here with Strikers, a tremendous club. Um, you know, FC Richmond, many other clubs in this area. We're all on the same page. We're all trying to utilize soccer to make people's lives better, to have fun, to connect families, and, and to have a lot of pride and ownership in, in, in Richmond. The USL is a remarkable organization that I'm really proud to, for Richmond to be a part of. And United Soccer Leagues have grown and, and changed so much over the last 25 years that, that the kickers have been a part of it. And I think it's on tremendous footing right now. I think it's never been stronger soccer in the USA. I mean, you talk about Major League Soccer with expansion fees now of $150 million. You know, it was 10% of that, you know, 10 years ago. And that's going to trickle down to Richmond and USL as well. Um, some people have asked about the shift to USL League One. It's a good thing. We believe in it's a good thing. You know, most of the Richmond kickers' history has been Division Three pro soccer. There's no shame in that. We should be really proud of that. We've had tremendous success, you know, winning the double in 1995 and a couple more championships in the mid-2000s. Most of the history and success of Richmond kickers has been in that Division Three pro level. Um, and I know that um, Parney's in the room from um, the Squirrels, you know, and, and when the Squirrels dropped down, for my red, it was a great thing. It was a smart move. You know, and you can allocate really well to be in a competitive situation, and I think uh, that's a good move for them and a good move for us as well. Um, the fans, you know, what that means to our, uh, our entity and our lifeblood is, and I talked about it before with Richard and his group with Red Army, um, we want fans to come to the game from all walks of life. It shouldn't just be soccer moms and dads, and we'll welcome them. Club soccer is beautiful and it's great, but we need to stretch a little bit. And uh, when I, I've been around the world and been to a lot of soccer experiences, like a lot of people in this room that grew up around soccer and grew up in different countries. And, um, you know, my soccer flavor uh, in terms of going to game experiences started when I was in fifth grade. I took a two-week uh, trip down to Mexico with my school and stayed with a Mexican family in Mexico City, and they took me to Azteca. You know, that is, that is the Estadio uh, Azteca in Mexico City is one of those places you don't, you don't leave the same. You're a little scared. You're a little nervous, but you know something really special going on in those foreign countries. Um, in high school, all my high school team and I went over to, to England and saw games. We saw Wimbledon play before the premiership even started. And again, a little nervous, but terribly excited and starting to kind of gather steam of what soccer means in this world. Um, in college, I was fortunate enough to go with a few teammates to the 1990 World Cup in Italy. We saw 10 games in, in uh, 12 days and just traveling around a European country with so many other people, not just Italians, people from all over the world, and just gathering that steam and that momentum uh, and just wanting to apply that. The 94 World Cup, many people were, were around then and going to those games in the USA with record-breaking crowds in football stadiums. Nobody thought it was going to happen, all right? The 99 Women's World Cup, I was at the final in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. All right, Brandy Chastain tearing off her shirt, hallelujah. What a, what a, what a great shot, what a great moment for Sports Illustrated, you know? 
Um, there's just been so many moments, and, and to me, uh, you know, we can channel that so well here. Um, I've been in a lot of college soccer environments, and, and college sports are uh, really important to me, and they mean a lot here as well, but I, I've been in some great, great environments, and um, you know, one of the best ones, honestly, is playing at VCU. You know, I mean, Ed's done a great job there, and Coach Gifford is not here today. He's a colleague of mine. He's recruiting that down, down in Florida. You know, that band, we need that band coming to City Stadium. That thing is electric. Because when it plays behind you, you can't think. You can't talk to your team. And it's such a home field advantage. And we need that band. We need, we need that kind of enthusiasm, that kind of noise. I talked to the Davidson basketball coaches about when they play in the Siegel Center, which is an electric atmosphere. I can't wait to get in there and see a game because I'm a huge basketball junkie. Um, and uh, they, they said they start nodding along when they're coaching um, to, the, to the music. And they, oh, my God, i got a coach. You know? And you, we want our coaches to do that. And we want to influence the other team. Not, maybe our coaches, but we also want the, the visiting team coaches. We want, to, we want to get in their head a little bit. Um, you know, it's, uh, you want to influence the game in, in different ways. And um, as a college coach, and I've been fortunate to take my team to Stanford, UCLA, Ohio State, University of Maryland, Clockner, University of Virginia, obviously, NC State, Chapel Hill, Duke, all these great places. But there's something about pro soccer that's really different. Um, and I feel like the fans can impact uh, our, our performance, our passion, our environment, uh, even more perhaps sometimes than, than the college game. Um, it has its special nature for sure, but I think we can really put our signature through Red Army uh, on this, on this, on this uh, development. Tickets, I'm going to go ahead and say it. We got to get the ticket sales going, people. You got to do, you gotta, we got to need ambassadors out there, all right? We want 8,000 fans at our game in late March. We can do that. We can feel that west side. I've been to University, I've been to City Stadium um, when the Final Four was hosted there in the mid-90s. 20,000 people there. Man, that was amazing. That was incredible. Um, and and we, need, we need to get big crowds. And we're going to do that in different ways. But I need everybody in this room to pledge with me to, to help with that. Because um, it's going be, to be a process for sure. But we're going to build something special. And we don't want people to come back. And they're going to come. And they're going to want to keep coming and tell their friends about it as well. Um, City Stadium. People are always thinking about that and talking about it. I use the word vintage. Um, it's, a, it's a classic place, man. That place is authentic. It's been around 100 years, a lot longer than any of us here. Um, it's, uh, it's a special place. Uh, it, it's, uh, we're doing some work on it. We're going to do a lot of work on it. Um, Scott McGuire has already done tremendous work already in the offseason since the season ended and uh, taking the photos of the locker room. And I sent it to a former kicker's great. He's now in a major league soccer club. And he was like, wow, that's changed. And he was impressed. And he's, a, he's with MLS Club. And he was really turned on by that. So um, we're going to do great things. We're going to do things in the short term. I won't tell you about them all now. I'm trying to leave some breadcrumbs, but not too much today. Uh, today's about conviction and energy. But um, we're going to develop that place. And we're going to have a lot of great events in there. We're going to have concerts in there. It's going to be a beer festival. There's going to be a um, farmer's market, obviously. There's a lot of things we can do with that space and that event. Um, we want to make sure we're, we're, we're good neighbors. We want to make sure that the neighbors right around those streets um, know us and appreciate us. And we're going to work with them. You know, um, I don't, can we do a playground? Can we do something to give back to that community? How do we connect with Carytown? What a funky street. What eclectic, you know, neighborhoods around there, businesses. Um, can we get them to come over uh, and people come to games and go there afterwards and vice versa? So, you know, C City Stadium is, is, is huge, and we're going to do a lot more than just soccer there. Um, our mission, and this is going to kind of uh, reflect a little bit how we want to involve partners, and I wrote down a few things. Um, Well-being, events community impact, civic pride, and RVA. Those are critical pieces of our mission and, and our culture and our conviction. Well-being is, you know, soccer, obviously being a sport, is, is such a good opportunity to influence well-being in so many different ways. Um, we all know that our country is not as healthy as it should be, and it's actually not getting any healthier. And so, how can we use the Richmond Kickers? How can we use athletics? How can we use events to make this community healthier, um, to get kids involved, to get families involved, to attract people to an event where they're having fun? Um, there's a lot that goes into well-being. Part of it, exercise, right? And we're going to have pro players exemplifying that at the highest level. Um, but part of that is mental health as well. And many studies have said that if you're part of a team and you're part of a culture and you're part of an event, you're going to be more positive. You're going to be more excited, and that's going to have so many ways to fight things like depression and otherwise. And so we really feel like we're a part of a well-being movement. 
events, as I said, we're going to have lots of things going on in that space. Community impact, um, you know, sky's the limit. You know, what can we do to impact Richmond in different areas? Um, and the kickers have done a great job at that, just as other youth soccer clubs as well. We want to reach out and get a little bit deeper and, and push some things. I mean, for me, RVA Access is a great example of helping soccer to um, push amazing people, special people, to, to have some, um, some opportunities to exercise, be around each other, to be positive for a moment in a tough life. We want to do more of that. You know, we want to, we want to try to establish a foundation. We want to try to get into schools and YMCAs and involve churches. And, um, you know, there, there's just so many ideas that we want to try, try to get to. Um, street soccer, we want to get that back here. Um, that, that was founded by a Richmond native who played at Davidson, um, Lawrence Can. And so there's just so many ways that we can, we can make an impact. And civic pride, you know, we're, we're Richmond kickers. And I want to make sure all our branding says Richmond. We're very much Richmond. And then this, this, this thing, RVA, is a great marketing and, and campaign as well that we want to do. Um, partners. And so what I'm doing, what I really want to try to translate before I wrap it up and send it over to David, is how can we get partners to build and channel and manifest these mission endeavors? So VCU, tremendous opportunity there. University of Richmond and other schools. Um, Barney, I know I had to leave a little bit early, and he and I have already been emailing. He's an early morning guy like me. He's, he's, he's emailing me at 6 a.m. All right, we're going to be coffee buddies. I can see that. Um, and I think that, um, you know, the schools in the area, the, the YMCAs, and then it goes to corporate partners. I've got to be honest. I mean, I am incredibly excited that we're Adidas. Adidas has been kind of part of my DNA for a long, long time. My business side before I was a college coach was all uh, funded by Adidas. They're the original in soccer. They're the pioneer in soccer. Um, people that are my age or older, you think about Tango and Samba and Gazelle and all those great uh, Copa Mundial were those when I played. Uh, I bought my first pair of Adidas yesterday in a long time. Um, Davidson's been Under Armour the last three years. Great company, fine company, um, partly because of Steph Curry. We, we were proud to be with Under Armour, but I'm thrilled to make the jump back over to Adidas. Um, and there's many partners that we have had and we want to continue to grow with. Um, Woodfin has been unbelievable. Um, bon Secours, um, uh, you know, Elephant uh, Insurance, and there's many more I want to mention that we're going to try to develop and grow. And there's new partners. And so, Paul Watson. Okay, so Paul Watson sitting in the crowd over there. So Paul Watson, if you didn't know it, is the founder of Ledbury. I'm wearing a Ledbury shirt. So I'm doing a little advertisement right now for Ledbury. They're, they're, they're for... Uh, Four, uh, four rows down here on the road, right outside the hotel. And we want to get more partners involved, like Paul and his group. And we're having lunch after this. I'm already setting them up a little bit, getting some free advertising. But there's so many great companies in, uh, in, in this area um, that we can try to get involved and help them grow their impact and what they want to connect with people, right? That's what we're trying to do for them as well. There's three things I kind of think about Richmond Kickers. I think of United, more than soccer, and let's go. United, great soccer term. Right, whether you're a Manchester United fan or not, DC United fan or not, United is really important in the, in the kind of soccer uh, world. I, I see some, some nods over there and some shaking their head. I get that. Um, but United to me obviously translates that we're in this together. You know, and I tell my team or I tell my organization we're all in, we're all in this together, and we're all in when we're there. All right, we have family, we have everything else we want to do in our life, but when we're together, we're focused on the task. More than soccer, events, impact, community, and let's go. That's a call to action. It's also a great vamos, Spanish term, right? Very popular in soccer. And we want to make sure this is a new chapter that we're going forward. We're going to have some really exciting announcements coming soon. We've got a couple senior vice presidents going to be announced very soon. We've got some player signings we're going to announce very soon. Hang tight. They're going to be coming here in the next few days, next two weeks. You're going to see a lot of things rolling out. But we don't want to do, complicate this, uh, this first meeting too much more than I already have. Um, last but not least, David Bulow. So David is a guy that we've had many conversations, um, really talked a lot about soccer, and I'm excited about David as a young, aspiring, ambitious coach. I talked to players on the team last year, and um, they're thrilled about David coming back. Um, they really like his energy. They like his idea of progressive soccer. Um, he's a disciple of uh, Greg Berhalter, as you might know, recently named national team coach, formerly Columbus Crew. Um, I like the way he thinks. I like the way he wants to win. He wants to win the league now, this year, and we're going to go after that. So I'm super excited to introduce head coach David Bulo. Thank you, Matt. Um, I think the first thing I think will sum up for me is I'm just excited and motivated. I'm motivated. 
I think first by Rob for, for trusting in me and giving me an opportunity. You know, I had an opportunity to go, go outside of Richmond and, and he showed face to me to, to give me the job in the first place. So I'm always grateful for that and that motivates me to live up to him. Um, I'm also motivated by Lee. I mean, it's, it's quite, quite a, a history that you've left here and, and, and big shoes to fill. Um, these are things that I discussed before, but that motivates me to kind of live up to the standard that he set for the Richmond Kickers. That's, that's the standard. Um, another thing that motivates me, it's, it's fun seeing the number of players here. They're still here, Berkey and Noach and Ronnie Pascal, Callie, Ross. You know, when, when I played here my first season coming uh, halfway through the season, we won the league in 2006. Um, I didn't play a huge part in that team, but it was, it was you know, exciting to be part of a winning winning club, you know, and then in 2009, we win the league again, but probably arguably the best team, sorry, Rob, for the double team, but that 2009 team was very, very good, and, um, you know, I think back to the game against Cincinnati this season and watching them celebrate on our field winning the league, I mean, that hurt me, you know, uh, I think back again to 2009 when, when Delhi scores, scores against, uh, I think it was Wilmington, and you know, being fortunate enough or unfortunate enough to be at the bottom of that pile, it's not very comfortable down there. But <laughs> just that excitement of winning, and I'm, I'm looking forward and motivated to bring that back. Uh, the next group that motivates me is the Red Army. I mean, it is not easy to support a team that's losing as much as you did at the end of the season, not through lack of effort, but um, just it was a big change for us last year, and it was a struggle, but for, for the Red Army to consistently be cheering and, and kind of motivating us it's that's that sticks with me uh and that's something i have to repay you guys with putting together a strong team and the last thing that's motivated me is just the excitement from from rob the rest of the group and matt um having belief in me having the ambition to uh to go out and challenge um i have a phrase that i'm saying to players uh on the phone that are interested in coming here that i won't repeat but <laughs> it's it's certainly motivating it shows the the ambition that I have for next year, and I'm very excited about that. I think I've been on the phone with Matt just about every single day since he was announced, and uh, he's been a huge help for me. I'm really excited about the, the, the caliber of players that have shown a real interest. Even though we've dropped, dropped down to this League One, I think they, they're buying into what, what not only the kickers are as a club and a history, but what my vision is, what Matt's vision, with the rest, everybody else who helps out from Ray to Pat to, to everybody. Um, I'm super excited about next next season, and it, just seeing what's happened in the last six days with uh, momentum picking up with player signings and coming up with the contracts and things like that is, it's getting me. I mean, we we say countless times this is this is exciting. This event is exciting for me because now it's starting to get a little bit more real for us. So um, hopefully, over the course of the next you know 10, 12 days, we'll have a number of signings and. You'll join in the excitement that we have uh, because my intention is to to go out and dominate the league and you know bring back the the, the successful reputation that the kickers have always had. So very excited. So thank you guys for being here. You can see we have a lot of excitement around these two gentlemen. Um, again, thank for your, all your support. Whatever you can do to push the word out about this is Richmond Kickers, I guess it was 4.0. So we're really excited to get started. Thank you guys for being here. And um, afterwards, the three of us are available for, uh, for any questions, follow-up interview questions. And then John Brooks, where are you? John Brooks from the board, Youth Club board. So present, he's going to join us as well. So thank you guys for being here. All right, Richard. You probably got some stuff. What do you need? You need drums? You need a horn?